welcome to this session four maps of devops by peter madison we are glad that all of you are can join us today and peter also with us without further delay uh, over to you pete peter okay thank you very much so uh, hello and welcome uh, looking forward to uh, running through this uh, little presentation it's about all about uh, finding ways of applying maps to uh, help manage your value streams and we call this the four maps of devops it's based off some practices that i've been developing called flow engineering so who am i i'm peter madison i'm a coach and a consultant a founder of a company called zodiac that helps organizations adopt new ways of working and uh, i've been many things in my career from a ic to a director running platform engineering to uh, running my own consulting company so quick uh, rundown of what we're going to be talking about uh, today. We're going to run through uh, this, this talk map, kind of a quick introduction to the industry, what's changing, what that's looking like. I'm sure you've heard a lot of this today, so I'll run through that quickly. Um, we're going to talk about DevOps and how DevOps helps us uh, make changes uh, into these environments. So we're going to talk about how four maps can help you construct a model for this. And we're going to dig a little deeper into how they feed into each other and how they've been applied in the wild. Before we wrap up with some q a so let's run through this in the introduction so in a fast-paced world customers demand instant gratification where we're tied to these these wonderful little black devices which we can then uh, use to collect information to contact people to communicate we use them for all of these different purposes and we expect to be able to instantaneously get uh, the things that we're looking for at our fingertips um, we've moved from this world where it was very expensive to switch between suppliers uh, and there was very initial, initially high investment and steep learning curve to uh, one where we have technology we could integrate and commoditizing of the general IT capabilities to what we're allowing us to grow and build much more, much larger, much more complex systems. Uh, and with this came a reduction in investment horizon and a move uh, away from CapEx and into OpEx. And now what we're seeing is very much the, the customer driving the, the value message, the customer is driving this. And we it's very cheap to set things up. It's very quick to be able to start to get going and build these systems that consume services that we can then glue together. And as a, and as a consequence of this as well, customers are have an expectation of a very fast return on uh, investment. There's lots of tools that help with this. Um, and they will help accelerate value delivery, but often our efforts with these fail from a lack of clarity, not tools. Uh, the organizational structures that we find ourselves in, the uh, the silos, the uh, the lack of uh, alignment to a common vision, uh, that's the lack of visibility into what's going on uh, across the organization gets in the way of us really truly getting the value from these tools that we implement to improve our value delivery. So. That's the introduction. It's all about value delivery and how the world is changing and how we, we need to help find ways to help accelerate this in our environments. Let's talk about DevOps. So DevOps is all about people, process, and tools working together to enable rapid and continuous delivery of value to customers. This really aligns well with our value delivery uh, message, but we find organizations focus so much on the tools and bringing the tools into place uh, that uh, they forget that they also need to change the processes and quite often forget that really we should have started people. What is it the people need? How are we going to actually work together to really bring uh, value to the table? Uh, and, and change is not easy. Change requires uh, us to be able to uh, understand uh, what's going to happen in the environment. We see this as an awful lot of risk. It's, uh, it can be threatening to us when we start to introduce these changes uh, and uh, that uh, we're going to modify how the organization is operating. Uh, what is the impact? Uh, is this something we can do? If I, if I start to make everything different, um, what's that mean for me? And so we have these models that uh, DevOps very helpfully provides us. Um, the, there's three ways and five ideals that Gene Kim popularized in his books, Unicorn Project and uh, the Phoenix Project. And uh, these, uh, these give us models that we can use and uh, to help understand uh, and start to break down some of these complex problems and use and apply DevOps to them. Uh, so the three ways being the first way is like make the system visible, uh, uh, see what's happening. By, and by doing that, as we start to measure, we can start to understand and improve it uh, to creating feedback loops, uh, understanding through uh, monitoring and looking at what happens when we make these changes so that we can understand uh, how that uh, we can change the system as a consequence of that to then continually iterating as being the third way. 
And this also feeds into the five ideals, making sure that we're, we're treating this locally in as simple way as possible, uh, uh, looking at um, uh, so that we can then have more focus and flow and joy in the work that we're doing uh, and imp continually improving, aligning very well to the, our third way with our third ideal to continually improving that. But to do all of this, we need that environment of psychological safety and ensuring that we're focusing on what our customers need. So when we think of DevOps, we think of things in terms of these pipelines. And if we think of it, uh, not just in terms of the tooling and the automation, think about uh, what is the end-to-end extreme value that we create? What is the end-to-end -end pipeline that delivers that? So if we have customers that provide us uh, requirements in channels, forums, focus groups, social media, and we, we might put together a delivery team, that delivery team might consider stuff somebody who owns the product that's going to be delivered, and they might have a, a bunch of team members are going to collaborate with them, and uh, together they're going to work out how do we do this and the, the together they'll come up with a set of, uh, of stories and prioritize what needs to happen. Uh, they'll, they'll break these down into smaller pieces. They'll pick the highest priority, the biggest business value, and they will break this down into smaller pieces uh, and they'll start to work and then they'll turn into code, into application code and test code and infrastructure code. We'll then have our CI tooling pull out things into an automated pipeline, which will automate the build, the test, the deploy of it. So we can push out a product that we can give to the customers uh, but for then we need our feedback. We need the monitoring, the logging, the test results, which can come back to the delivery team and the customers so that we can say, okay, what, how did you feel about this? Was this what you were looking for? As we start to then work on iteratively and incrementally delivering more and more value. Uh, and we can then measure to start to understand how we can possibly improve on this. What can we do to uh, help um, make this go smoother and better and faster? So we're really delivering value. And as we introduce all of these new paradigms, these new ways of working, this new knowledge, we've also got to ensure that we're still meeting all of the existing uh, commitments in the organization. And this often ends up with us sort of ignoring uh, the, the changes that comes into then complaining like, I don't want to do this. This isn't going to impact me. If you change the way that I do things, everything's going to go horribly bad. To Please don't do this to me. To sulking about, uh, well, now you've done it. Everything's going to break. You've made changes and it's not going to work to finally accepting it. And our role as change agents and our role as um, uh, with DevOps is to try and help drive this change adoption curve down so that we can uh, have a, the impact that we're looking for while still allowing uh, people to be able to uh, come together and uh, actually understand and not be so impacted by the change that we're unable to move forward. So that's, that's about the introduction about value delivery, about how uh, the world is moving to this value delivery model to the how DevOps uh, gives us models and ways of looking at changing that, but how the introduction of these new practices, these new ways of working uh, creates a lot of change and that in it itself is something that is difficult for people to deal with. So we need, we need to further ways of helping us be able to break this down. And this is where four maps comes in. So if we have our three ways and our five ideals, the four maps can be considered as a way of uh, getting us from one to the other to help to bring out from the, these principles and these ideas, the, the, the concrete steps that we can undertake in, in order to start to get uh, going, like uh, to start to say, okay, well, if I, if I wanna create that vision, what do I need to actually do? What does that, uh, that look like? And what are the steps I might want to take to do it? So at the core of flow engineering are these four maps. The, the four key maps define the direction, align stakeholder perspectives and, and guide our decisions as we move through um, the process. So we've got outcome mapping, which helps us define and clarify our outcomes. We have uh, value stream mapping, which helps us identify and address uh, flow constraints. We have dependency mapping, which helps us visualize and address the external needs of the system. And uh, we have capability mapping, which helps us measure and address all of the internal needs. Like, what do we need to actually make these things happen? Uh, we've, uh, so flow engineering starts with the outcome. Begin with the end in mind. Um, we, we want to ensure that we're focusing on the outcomes and creating that clarity of vision. Uh, by working to team, we want to create our alignment 
first so that we can start to understand what is the outcome we want? Why are the reasons we want to get there? What are the obstacles we see that we might need to overcome? And what can we do to overcome those obstacles? And we can then help find those. That, and that in itself will provide us with a, a path forward that we have. We now end up with a backlog of impediments that, and those impediments uh, are our path. Those are our map. That is what we need to do to move forward. Uh, we can then uh, move on and use that to guide us in finding more friction with value stream mapping, looking at uh, where in, a, in our system might there be friction. So value stream mapping, providing a time diagnostic at the end to end system. Uh, in this particular example with this, this, this company we were working through and then the top part of the board, we very quickly realized there was actually a, a, a sub value stream, a nested value stream inside of the larger one, which needed to also be mapped. And so we started to build that out and understand and what actually happens in order for the overall end-to-end -end system to work. Uh, when we look at uh, outside of the system, at dependency mapping, we want to look at uh, what things are also impacting. Are there regulations or compliance that we need to ensure that the system is abiding to? Are there other things inside of our organization that we need to make sure are satisfied? Uh, are there technical dependencies that we need to ensure that we take care of? Um, and understanding and mapping those stakeholders is critical to looking at that end-to-end -end system. Um, the, we also need to understand and look at capabilities. So if we understand what the outcomes we want are, we can start to break down and look at, well, what capabilities do we need in order to achieve those outcomes? And that will in turn give us the ability to uh, build out the, the right capabilities, uh, take the right courses, bring the right skills to the, the table to help us reach the outcomes that we're looking for. So we talked through value delivery, how the world is changing as a consequence of that. We've uh, we've talked about how DevOps uh, gives us models to uh, help us um, accelerate our value delivery practices, but how that also introduces a lot of change. We, we talked about how the four maps can help us quantify and, and what it is that we need to do, and, we've, and we'll now we're going to dig a little deeper into how these maps are interrelated uh, and provide some uh, examples. So, so in terms of order and context, if we if we run through this, we're going to start with discovery. We're going to look at uh, what is the situation, what is the situational awareness that we have of where we are today, um, and so that we can start to design where we want is we want to go, because uh, we have to understand that baseline. We have to be able to quantify um, where we are as a baseline in order to be able to uh, ac accurately uh, start to create measures of where it is we're going to go. We can't just say, well, we want to be faster. Uh, faster isn't going to be enough, like how much faster, what is faster going to mean? Faster might mean different things to different people. We need to come up with more concrete quantifications of, uh, of where we want to go to so that we can actually start to engineer our solutions around that. And we start with our, our outcome mapping. We start with what are those outcomes that we want? Uh, and if we start to break those down, what are the, the more short-term outcomes? What are the outcomes we can achieve uh, faster than uh, the, and which ones are more aspirational in nature? And that in turn will create a map of those outcomes. We will also look at uh, value stream mapping so that we can now look at uh, the time diagnostic, like where are the bottlenecks in the system? Where are the problems we can start to apply uh, and look at how we might apply lean practices over the top of, uh, of the actual delivery system. And that in turn will also provide a, a map of opportunities where we can look at uh, improving. Uh, and then we'll look at dependencies. Are there other things outside of the value stream uh, that will will impact our ability to achieve those outcomes of the other things that we need to be aware of other stakeholders that will have to contribute to what we need to create. Uh, we'll look at uh, that as we'll create our external map of dependencies on the system. And we'll look at capability map. So the what are the uh, capabilities we need in order to achieve these outcomes? And that in turn will create our, our map of systems and uh, skills and uh, capabilities that we're going to need in order to uh, in order to be able to create um, our overall view of this. And these, of course, are our four maps that we've been talking about. Uh, in turn, these outcome map will feed off our uh, other maps. So the outcome map will inform us of our aspirations, treats, creating a clarity of purpose. Uh, the, the friction map will improve our external maps around knowing our outcomes, delivery flow, it forms where we have our gaps. Uh, Excel map will help us uh, say, now we can look at what resources we need and identify the gaps. All of this then gives us a, a number of things which we can prioritize, a number of um, 
activities that we can start to look at prioritizing. We could standardize them and build out a uh, prioritization and use that as our, our flow roadmap or our, our, our model for like, where do we want to go? What do we want to tackle first? What are the first sets of outcomes we want to target? And what is it that we need in order to be able to achieve those? Uh, this in turn, um, so here's an example of how we've gone about applying this. So we working with uh, at, a, at a very extracted high level view, uh, working with a with a company to help them uh, understand uh, in a very complex delivery system where they're delivering software into uh, into other companies, and um, they're looking at how do they like improve the customer and employee satisfaction? They want to also move into the North American market and they're looking at how do we achieve these, these, these outcomes? We've got targets and goals and what we're looking to do, but we can see that our, our systems aren't working quite the way we want to. So from there, we use that to guide um, our conversations around looking at the value stream, like how do we actually do delivery today? How long do each of these steps take? How much time do we spend waiting? How much rework is there in the system? What are, the, what are perhaps some experiments we could run to uh, introduce uh, changes into that system that might allow us to be able to deliver faster uh, and have better feedback? We look at dependencies, um, dependencies from all of the different parties that needed to be involved across this complex system and ensuring that we understood um, how each of those needed to interact and looking for opportunities where we could simplify the, or those or decouple those dependencies to allow the delivery system to flow more smoothly. We uh, then also looked at capabilities, like what are the capabilities that uh, they don't have that they need in order to be able to enable these outcomes? And how can we bring those to the table? What things do we need to do? And through going through this process and creating that prioritization and then taking agreeing to take those actions, we immediately started to see the improvements in the system. Uh, this immediately allows us to start to look at how we do things. We, we pointed out um, <coughs> we could very easily halve the environment creation time by lining up the DevOps resources, removing the ticketing pieces that was going on. There was a lot of handoffs going on in the environment creation piece that didn't need to happen. And so there was activities like that that we, we undertook and could demonstrate the immediate benefits of being able to get environments up and running faster, which allowed them to uh, start with their experiments faster, which allowed them to deliver quicker which is uh, was a great benefit. So then how do we scale this? So if, if we think that we have, we have uh, value streams running across the organization and in those value streams, we'll have a number of different products which will probably be contributing to them. So as we look at the end-to-end -end value streams, the, the stream of work that is creating value for our customers, um, we, the, we'll have products in there and those products will come and go. So we need a way of being able to understand and manage this. And as we start to scale across the organization, um, the, an effective way to do this is to build this flow enablement team. Uh, so as we start to provide guidance on uh, the introduction of new practices, they'll start with coaching development and uh, application of these flow engineering practices, and they'll help build these within the organization. So these ways of working or flow enablement teams can be a very effective way to uh, help with um, being able to move these things forward. My uh, telegram is uh, buzzing away like crazy. So look at that. Uh, the, another important um, a piece now is uh, great. Hey, I'm convinced. Uh, so flow engineering in the wild, you can find out more at, uh, at Zodiac's website, my company's website, um, and at visible.is, who's uh, um, a good friend of mine, uh, C. Pereira, that I collaborate with on uh, the flow engineering models. Um, and uh, him and another a guy who's part of our community called Andrew Davis have a book coming out soon. You can join our community at uh, flowcollective.org. Uh, this is a great place to come and discuss all things flow. We set it up because we were finding that uh, just the conversations in Agile and DevOps didn't go as deep as we would like into some of the topics we wanted to discuss. It was a great place to come and uh, share ideas and talk about everything around uh, value, uh, value delivery, leadership, uh, and how you introduce change into organizations. And uh, it's a, a great forum for that. 
uh, agenda shift is uh, is another great Mike Burrow's work. I, I I really like and appreciate that. And there's some great ideas over there, and the the uh, BVSSH movement that I also partner with. Uh, on initiatives to help introduce and bring a lot of these ideas to the uh, to the forefront and uh, help organizations adopt them. So with that, uh, by way of wrap up and Q&A, we've run through quite a lot. Sounds like a lot of work, uh, but uh, a lot of it boils down to this is like start with the outcomes, not the solutions. Uh, I, I often like to explain this when I'm consulting as using the nine step solution selling model is that uh, there's nine steps in solution selling. And if uh, what we find is that uh, as technology, we often end up starting at step seven, which is with the, having the solution in mind, and we skip the first six. So going back and looking at like, what is the thing we're actually trying to solve for properly defining the problem is critical uh, and going back and working through that process before we get to the point of saying, hey, I've got a solution, let's just execute, let's go automate, let's go faster, faster, faster. It, taking the time to do that planning piece is essential. Um, and uh, I find organizations um, often don't spend enough time on that in their rush to adopt new ways of working and don't understand the value that comes from the planning process, uh, not necessarily trying to abide by a static plan. We'll get to that. Don't boil the ocean, start small, plan for incremental changes into the environment. Um, mapping exercises don't have to take a long time. You don't have to plan for months and months and months and years. You, you want to plan for four to six months out. You want to, uh, you want to be able to execute these mapping exercises frequently and be able to do them in a few hours. Um, the, and the value is in the mapping, not the map. We, the value is in coming together, collaborating, having the discussion, building out this common understanding of what things look like, not in the, the resulting uh, map that may come out of that. And with that, that's uh, everything about the four maps of uh, DevOps in 20 minutes. And uh, if you would like to um, uh, take the survey, there's one question to be answered. Uh, and if you want to grab the uh, link there or take the QR code, then it's, uh, uh, I'm happy to send you some material and connect with me. And I'm happy to share more information about uh, how flow engineering works and uh, how it can help you. OK, thank you very much. Thanks, Peter, for sharing your experience with us today. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks, Peter.